Hello, good morning or good evening. I'm Snackadack and welcome to today's video. For today, I'm here to show off a bit of what lasers can do in this game as far as weapons go and to help show you how to make a few different laser drones to help take care of enemies for you. Uh, so to start, we're going to start with the most basic design, which is one homing cart, one construct head, one beam emitter, and one shock emitter. Alright, so for this, you're going to want to take the homing cart, and this is going to be the base of it. Obviously, as the name says, it homes in on enemies. Uh, you're going to take the construct head and attach it to the top. Uh, that's going to aim at enemies, and it's going to help target your weaponry. You're going to slap the laser on top of that. And then you're going to take this shock emitter, and you're going to glue this to the front of it. So this is your most basic type of little enemy attack drone. Uh, it works, it'll target the enemies, and it does decent damage, but it does struggle a bit when it comes to like the damage cap of the beam emitter. For example, let's come over here. So let's start it up. Go get him. So as you'll see, it's taken out the one up top pretty quick because it's a lower ranked enemy. But when it comes to, like, the Silver Bull Coblin, it's going to take it a while to get through that HP. The Shock Emitter is, helps a bit more there. But overall, as you can see, it's pretty low damage. And it can take a while to get through some enemies with higher HP, like the silver ranked enemies, and especially against bosses, this isn't very good because bosses will just despawn this long before you can do enough damage to actually take them out in a meaningful manner. So you might be asking, how can we improve from here? Well, if the beam emitter's not good damage, how do we fix it? Well, the problem isn't necessarily the beam emitter itself. Maybe it's the damage cap of the beam emitter. What if there was some way to possibly pulse fire the beam emitter so that it can do a higher damage over time? For this build, you're going to need the same parts, but you're just going to need one additional construct head. So you're going to need one homing cart, one beam emitter, one shock emitter, and two construct heads. So the way we're going to make this work is we're going to take this, we're going to take the second head and we're going to flip it upside down and then put it at an angle. Then you attach it to the top of the first head facing the same direction as it. Like so. And then we're going to take the beam emitter and we're going to glue it to the tail of this one. Mm. Oop, didn't mean to click B. We glued it on there crooked, I want to straighten that out. There we go. So now we glue this to the top of this like before and we attach the shock emitter to the front of it. Now this build, this build will have the pulse fire laser if it's attached correctly. Oh no, something didn't work. Something went wrong somewhere. Hmm. What about now? There we go. So the problem was attaching it solely to the top. You gotta try and attach it to the, apparently the front side of this bottom piece. Uh, when you go to attach this, you have to attach it to the face plate of the one that is upside down and diagonal. It'll partially glue to the tail of it as well, which is what's gonna help you here in getting the automatic fire going down. So now if we click it, it should be working fine. There we go. So now let's take this over to an enemy. Okay, here are two enemies. So we have two Bokoblins down here for this to go and take on. So let's see if the pulse beam emitter is working properly. 
Get it a bit closer so it'll register the enemies. There it goes. Hey, it's working. Now can it hit its target? That is the only question. Oh, it's starting to get him. So if you'll notice, uh, when the pulse actually... Oh, there it goes with the rapid fire. Uh, <laughs> the pulse overall will do more damage than the static firing beam emitter, usually. There are exceptions where sometimes it can bug out a bit, but if you'll notice, uh, it's doing a decent chunk of damage even to this guy. Uh, the shock emitter on the front especially helps as well, but just... It's doing substantially more damage than the beam emitter realistically should for the point that it's at. Uh, the best comparison I can think to compare this to, if any of you have ever played it, is the Binding of Isaac, where some uh, bosses have like a... I'm trying to remember what it was called, but like a damage reduction where continuous damage over time can only do so much damage. Uh, so if you have a way to like delay the oncoming damage, you can reset that and do more damage than you should be able to. It might be a bit of a weird comparison, but uh, this thing works pretty well for what it is. So then you might be asking, what's the downside of a vehicle like this? And well, there's one main downside, which is it doesn't handle especially well if you're on hills like this, because it could possibly fall over and get toppled over. Uh, and then you have other enemies that could possibly be throwing explosions and such that have another chance at also toppling this thing over. Let's get it close. There we go. So it sniped that out of the air. Look at it go, though. It's not a half-bad vehicle all around, I'm gonna be honest. We're not throwing a single swing in this combat though we're letting this thing take care of it for us it's got us i feel like a sh like a frost emitter at the front might be more effective than a beam emitter though if i'm honest we'll test that out with the next build get it there you go Look at how much damage it's doing to the silver guy. It's shredding through his HP. Oh my lord. Alright, not bad, not bad, not bad. So this build's a pretty good test. But I do want to test, because I am curious, about how well it would do if we had a frost emitter at the front instead of a beam emitter. And how can we improve this instead of just one laser fire drone? Well, there's a few ways to do this, but I think it would be more interesting, uh, if you've seen my previous video, uh, to make more than one and make a little squad of drones that we could deploy all at once. I think that is a hilarious prospect that we should definitely do. So, keep in mind the build limit is 21 or 22, I believe, so realistically we can get four drones with the same setup. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to just swap out the shock emitter on the front for a frost emitter and then we're just going to recreate a, uh, recreate a few of them and then we're going to glue them together. So we're going to take the shock emitter and we don't really need it. There we go. So we attach the frost emitter to the front. So how many pieces is this overall? So this is five. So with this, we should be able to deploy four total drones like the other one with one stick at the back to attach them all. So let's get over to some more level ground and we'll work on building this out. So first let's drop out the additional parts we need. And with that, I'm just going to use auto build to recreate the last build we made, and we're going to make them one at a time. So this is the second one. 
it should go without stating, uh, if you're wanting to recreate these and you don't, you don't have auto build yet, you will have to make these one at a time. But with auto build, as you can see, it makes it a bit easier to go through and, uh, recreate something you've already made. And with that, we have our four little drones. So... To attach these all together, uh, there's a few ways you can go about it, but in my opinion and my favorite way is to use a spear style weapon. That way you can, when auto building, you can just shake it off to detach them when they're activated, or if you're using one and building it outright like I am right now, you could just walk up and grab it off to put it back in your inventory. To put it back in your inventory, I apologize. Uh, so let's take one and we're going to drop one out. Let's take it and attach it to the back of this guy. Actually, let's take it and attach it to the side, so this way we have more room and they're all facing the same direction. Ah, uh, that's crooked. So let's straighten that out real quick. So there's one. There's two. And now we're going to take these and we're going to attach them to the inner part of this spear. So there's the third one, and then we're going to take the final one and attach it here. So ultimately the build is all four of them like this attached with the spear at the back. So to deploy them, you would smack them to activate them. All four would activate at once, and then you just walk up and detach them by taking the stick. Now again, if you have auto build, it makes it very easy to recreate it and reattach them all like this. Additionally, if you've used the spear that you originally used to attach them like this, you can just spend three zoanite ore to recreate this. Uh, without actually having to expend a spear, and then you can just destroy the spear by detaching it. Now let's go find a camp to test this in, why don't we? Unless they've chosen violence. Y'all got it. So let's use this to test them out, why don't we? Jeez, they're both already dead, and now they're just ganging up on the silver moblin. Oh no, that is so much damage. Oh my god, they're just jumping him. Holy shit. Oh my god, I'm so glad I switched to the frost emitters. It's so much better. No, don't hit me. I'm your creator. Okay, so to radiate... So to re okay, so to reiterate what we made before, uh, the total amount of parts we're going to need is we're going to need four homing carts, eight construct heads, four beam emitters, four frost emitters, and one spear or item of your choice to glue them together. Oh no, did we chuck the spear away? Oh well, we chuck the spear away. So this is where the auto build comes in handy for the three zoanite ore. So we're gonna build this up and we're just gonna let it loose on this camp over here. These poor creatures don't- oh, whoops. These poor creatures don't deserve this, honestly. This feels like a war crime. We grab it by the stick and we basically just carry them up until they see the enemies. There they go. Let them go. Get them. See how well they do. Freeze them. Yeah.
Oh, look at that one guy go. Jeez, they're fucking my guy up. No, defend me. Thank you. They pulled a get down, Mr. President. <laughs> okay. They handle hills so well. Oh, I'm so proud of my boys. I'm not scared of you. No, my boy. Don't worry, I've got you. Now, if you're ever going to run out of energy like I'm about to, you can always eat a large zone I charge and it'll fully recharge your energy. Now, is that all the enemies here? Surely they haven't taken everyone out already, right? There's got to be one guy left, right? Oh my god, they killed everyone. Uh... Shockingly efficient. You know what? I'll give him credit. Just to kind of show off how strong this is. This is kind of overkill. But, uh... Like... Check him out. They're, they don't stand a chance. I feel bad. Take him out, boys. Or... Four monsters, honestly. Ooh, it is refreshed. Okay, so let's take this on real quick to give a really good test and like a really good show of our weapons really quick. take this build in here i'm gonna activate it slightly before we get to here i'm gonna activate it here and then i'm going to detach this and then run forward to activate the coliseum there we go let's activate the coliseum now let's watch these guys tear them to shreds Get them, boys. Sick them. Oh, did they turn off? Whoops. Ignore that first guy. He was a casualty. Oh, shit. Fuck him up. Get the blue guys. Oh, my God. They don't stand a chance. already dead the next wave so now we get to the black book albums all right so they just gotta juke the freeze guys and get to me and then once they get that far they've still got to dodge all of the myriad of lasers and death oh my lord so we, then we got the one silver don't worry, man. I made these especially for you. Go get them. Oh my lord. Just... Just wow. These are incredibly effective. Holy shit. Look at how quickly, look at just how utterly they dominate that man. And now we have the final wave of one of everyone. Get them, boys. Oh, whoops. Didn't mean to look that way. They already took out the bomb guy. Now there is one silver for you guys to focus on. Oh, looks like they already took out the Black Book Goblin, so it's only the silver one left. 
cheese. Well, needless to say, I like to think these vehicles are pretty effective. Uh, I think that's a good place to call it for here. These are a couple builds to just help to show off what you can do with these kinds of pulse lasers that target onto enemies, and a way to help show you off how to make drones. Thank you to any of you who tuned in to the end of that. Uh, I'm just here with a quick update on where things are and what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this short build video. I'm planning on putting out more of these little uh, build snippets that help show off uh, both a part of the game and a thing you can work with, and help show you a few builds or things to go with that. I'm also going to be trying to put out some short content more like trivia and random things for the game, such as, uh, for example, like, the easiest thing I could think of off the top of my head would be like a short based around like how to use a push from uh, a puff shroom, what it does, where you can find it. Aside from that, as you guys can see, I'm starting to use these 2D models now to help add something to my videos. Uh, it adds a bit of personality. I did not personally make this VTuber model, and I'm not the most sold on it, but for now I'm going to use this one for everything that's not Pokemon related. And for anything that is Pokemon related, I'm going to be using the Shinx VTuber model that you'll also see in an upcoming Pokemon uh, team profile for a Regulation D team, and you've probably seen in my few uh, Pokemon streams. But yeah, I feel like I should give that update. Aside from that, uh, I've been playing a lot of Monster Hunter lately that I'm going to be trying to stream a bit more. Uh, and I'm thinking of trying out Hitman again now that they've added particles back to the game, but I'm not 100% on that. Because honestly, I wasn't feeling Freelancer as much as I thought I would. The roguelike aspect of it wasn't as fun as I thought it could be, and things were a bit too expensive for how little money you would make overall. But yeah, aside from that, let me know down in the comments if there's anything in particular you guys want me to work on, or if there's anything you want to see from me. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.